Hey guys, welcome to another episode of All About the Music. This is Ranking the Studio Albums by Pearl Jam. So please stick around for tons of Pearl Jam information, um, tons of, of uh, just going to be ranking the studio albums by them. Um, and I, if you don't know, I am in the pursuit of hearing every song ever recorded, and I'm kind of tackling the discographies of my favorite musicians first. Um, I made a list of my favorite 230 artists, and um, currently Pearl Jam sit at number 80 on my list, which doesn't sound too high, but out of 230, uh, that's pretty respectable. Um, I like I like 37 songs out of 159. Um, now that doesn't include B-sides and soundtracks and rarities. There's actually a lot more by Pearl Jam that I like if you include the non-album tracks. Um, but they come in, they're coming in at 23.27% uh, currently. Uh, it could get better or worse depending on where their future albums go. Um, so we're going to jump right in. Um, oh man, I had... Um, I don't have all of these on physical copies, so we're gonna we're gonna jump right in here to the discography of Pearl Jam. What is gonna be the worst? What is gonna be the best? Uh, do, are you guys gonna agree with me? Are you guys gonna disagree with me? I'm gonna get pulled up the worst Pearl Jam album ever, in my opinion, is going to have to be 2009's. Uh, Backspacer, uh, did not like the album art, did not like the singles, uh, The Fixer was okay, um, Gonna See My Friend was okay, um, and there just really wasn't much else on Backspacer, I don't think I've ever revisited Backspacer, maybe I need to, maybe I need to give it another listen. But just right now, it's, it's coming at the bottom of my Pearl Jam favorites. Another kind of meh album for me. Um, now, you know, Pearl Jam are a great band. So even their, even their uh, not-so-good albums, um, you know, like this one, I, you know, there are some good songs on No Code. There was actually kind of a strange thing with No Code uh, back in the day of uh, downloading music and burning CDs. Um, several of Pearl Jam's albums would come up on my computer as a different album when you put them in. So a uh, No Code and I think uh, one of their other albums got kind of uh, mixed up in the in the iTunes programming. I think it was No Code and Yield um, actually came up as each other. Did you guys have that issue back in the 2000s? Uh, like and subscribe. Let me know if you did. Um, let's take a look at the track listing for No Code. I think there are some good songs in there. Um, Who Are You, Off He Goes, um, Lucan is on there. Uh, and those, you know, there's some there's some good material there. So, you know, a, you know, Backspacer really didn't do much for me. But even their second worst album is... is Pretty good. Uh, so we're going to move on to as we get better and better with Pearl Jam. I need to keep in mind which ones I have physical copies of. Um, I've got, got a few here we'll get into when we get to them. Uh, one of them is a bonus round. If you guys want to stick around till the end of the video, please do that. It, it helps for some reason. It's going to help me become rich and famous. Coming in next is going to be bi Binaural. This is kind of, you know, like I'm not used to talking about music out loud. It's just always been in my head. So these videos, I, a lot of these words I've never said out loud before. So this is kind of cool, kind of a first. Um, Binaural uh, is the sixth Pearl Jam album. And it's got some good songs. Uh, God's Dice, Light Years, Nothing As It Seems, um, and Grievance or, or Singles. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a hidden track called Writer's Block, which I don't really recall. But um, yeah, Binaural is a, well, 2000. Binaural's 2000. Uh, it's a pretty good album. 
we're going to move on. We're, just gonna, we're going to start getting into the, the better Pearl Jam albums, um, of course. Uh, this is going to be 2013's Lightning Bolt. Um, this one... This one I kind of I enjoyed a lot of the songs on this one. Where is it? Lightning Bolt from October 15th. Um, you got Get Away. Mind Your Manners was great. Is written by Mike McCready. Uh, Siren. I absolutely Sirens is hands down my favorite song off of Lightning Bolt. Um, Let the records play is pretty good. Um, Moon, they're always, they always write a lot about moons, at least in two songs. I think it's probably more. Uh, but yeah, Lightning Bolt was pretty dang good to be coming in third from bottom on my list. Coming in next is 94's Vitology. Uh, this, I bought this record when I was just getting in. I was just falling in love with every song, every album, every band from the 90s in the like 96 to 2000. And so I was building up this collection, and um, Vitology was one, it just, it initially, um, I was very disappointed in it compared to their other albums that I had already heard, um, but it's got some really great songs on here. Spin the Black Circle, Not For You, Corduroy, and Better Man. She dreams in color, she dreams in red, can't find a better man. She dreams in color, she dreams... Hey, buddy. You just got to see Buddy back there. He's scratching himself all over the couch. Can't find a better man. So, yeah, Vitalogy, Vitalogy uh, is just a really strange album. And it irritated me that it, did, it wouldn't fit properly on my CD case, on my CD rack. Actually, at one point, when I had a different storage unit, um, I had to turn it the wrong way to get it to fit so screw you Pearl Jam that was really not cool uh, these digipacks you know some of them are nice Vitology's digipack it was some weird size it had cardboard inside of it yikes so criticizing the packaging of Vitology from 94 uh, but they, it did have some good material on it coming in next is going to be um, it's kind of interesting Pearl Jam uh, waited until 2006 to have a self-titled record. But it's not too bad. You know, not too bad. You got the uh, the pair or whatever on the front. Uh, but uh, I did enjoy Life Wasted, Worldwide Suicide, and The Wasted Reprise. Um, some of the deep cuts. Um, maybe Severed Hand was pretty good as well. Um, so yeah, self-titled Pearl Jam. They did kind of... Um, Usually with a self-titled record, it's like a sign of a band reinventing themselves. Um, you know, one could argue, looking at their discography, um, I guess they did kind of reinvent it from Riot Act to that one. Um, we'll get we'll get more on that later. Ooh. Ah. Um, okay, so we have went through a lot of Pearl Jam records. Got the self-titled. What's coming in next? Coming in next, this is where we're starting to get the really, really good stuff. Uh, this is my favorite early Pearl... Well, no, it's one of my favorites. Uh, Yield. And it's like I told you, uh, if you put it into a computer back in the early 2000s, uh, Yield would come up as no code and vice versa. Um, absolutely love Brain of J, Faithful, uh, Given to Fly, and Wish List. And do the evolution. I mean, come on. That that middle of this record is just absolutely perfect. Also, kind of a neat thing. If you can see that, uh, track 8 is uh, it's known as the color red. But it's just a red dot. The, the, the name of the song is Red Dot. Uh, written by Jack Irons. Um, MFC, Low Light, In Hiding, Push Me, Pull Me, and All Those Yesterdays. Um, really, really interesting album. Really interesting album. Uh, really kind of dug Yield quite a bit. Coming in next, I'm really surprised at this. 
I, I surprised myself with my own information here. Coming in next is the brand new Gigaton. Um, I was a little bit skeptical at first, but I absolutely fell in love with uh, Dance of the Clairvoyance. I don't know what it is. That song just really gets me. It, it feels very personal to me, and I really relate to that song a lot. Um, very strange, very weird, and unusual song. Super Blood, Wolf Moon. Um, I enjoyed it to a lesser extent, but it was pretty good. Uh, Quick Escape was my least favorite single from the record, but uh, as far as deep cuts go, 7 O'Clock is great, and, um, and River Cross. Those, those are, you know, I'm really glad that in 2020, uh, Pearl Jam's still doing it. So, uh, yeah, that's a pretty great 2020 record from the guys. And, uh, yeah, really made, made, it's one, there's only been like two huge rock records released in 2020 because of all the craziness. And that was one of them. You know, you got Green Day and Pearl Jam, uh, you know, 30 plus years into their careers and still putting out fantastic music. Coming in next, I think I actually have this next one. I got a bonus round coming up. Wait a minute. Yep, I do. You guys are going to freak out. You guys are going to freak out. Guarantee. I, I don't think this is coming in as anybody else's third favorite from Pearl Jam, especially behind um, my top two picks. But I love this. This was uh, my first Pearl Jam CD. I've had this thing forever. Um, it came out in 91. I, I got this in probably sometime after 96. Um, but it was a gift from my parents. Um, really treasure this one. Um, this album is near perfect, right? You got to uh, check out the back of it. You got that really cool poster. Got the reflections of my dirty living room. Man, cannot say enough good things about this one. Um, you got once, once upon a time, I could contain myself, even flow. Thoughts arrive like butterflies. I sound just like Eddie Vedder. It's great. Um, oh, I, I, oh, I'm still alive. Yeah, I, oh, I'm still alive. Yeah, I. Why go home? Sorry, buddy. Black. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't. Uh, black. Just go listen to Black right now. Just go listen to Black and cry your eyes out. And how? How in the world? Like just the emotion on this entire thing. Um, you know. Oh my gosh. Alive. Why go black? Jeremy. Oceans, Porch, Garden, Deep, Release, produced by Pearl Jam and Rick Parisher. This is a near-perfect record. I mean, seriously, I know that this one gets a lot of praise, but I just got to give it my my uh, my little bit of Pearl Jam. And uh, this is freaking amazing. This is, uh, you know, 91. Uh, this is just absolutely insanely good. Um yeah, go listen to Black and Jeremy. Um, wow. They just recently did a... I just started seeing a lot where they've released... I think it's been released before, but the unedited version of Jeremy. And uh, it's kind of, kind of a cool thing going on right now with Pearl Jam. What do we got? We are getting into the top echelon here. That was 10 from 1991. Really loved that one a whole lot. Really gave it a lot of praise. Coming in next for my personal favorite. Uh, this is my second favorite Pearl Jam record. And it's going to have to go to. The honor goes to. Versus. Um, yeah, i uh, not digging that album cover. What in the world? Why? Oh, here's the alternative album cover. You got the, uh, the sheep facing a different way. But this one is near perfect as well. 
Uh, you got Go, Animal, Daughter, Glorified G, Dissident, WMA, Blood, Rearview Mirror, Rats, Elderly Woman Behind, Encounter in a Small Town, Leash, and Indifference. Wow, this is just crazy good. Um, yeah, just absolutely amazing. Um, this album went to number one in a lot of places. Um, they got a just oh man, yeah. Go go listen to Pearl Jam's uh, verses. Cannot say enough about it. Um, it's just fantastic, fantastic hard rock, grunge rock, alternative rock album. Absolutely love it. I'm not even going to tell you guys what my favorite Pearl Jam record was. It doesn't matter. There's there's no point. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I feel like this one's just really special to me. Um, oh man, I'm going to have to smell this one. This is, I know it. This is probably one of the best smelling CDs of all time. Which, how often do you hear that in a review? Um, here's the back of it. Here's the side of it. Here's the other side of it. Here's the other side of it. And here's the cover. That's right, folks. Best Pearl Jam record of all time goes to 2002's Riot Act. Woo! Woo! That is right. I am insane. No, you know, it's a it's a it's an opinion thing. I'm gonna have to do some research and see if anybody else thinks that uh that Riot Act is the greatest. I'm gonna Google it right now. Riot Act is the greatest. Pearl Jam record ever. I'll see if anybody on Google agrees with me. Uh, the 10 best Pearl Jam records. How many do they have? That doesn't count. That's all. That's right. That's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, okay. We're not even... Who cares what anybody else thinks? This is my freaking video. You sons of crackers. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, Riot Act. Um, now, I read a lot about this when it came out in 2002. A lot of people had this idea that this album was a band, was, was like, it was the sound of a band that acknowledged that they were bored with themselves or that they were, um, they acknowledged that maybe they kind of overstayed their welcome and a lot of things like that. I disagree. I feel like that this is their highest point artistically um, that we've seen. Um, yeah, cannot say enough about this one. Let me take a good look at it here. Um, I'm having, there's the CD, there's the CD. Oh my gosh. Oh man, this is just, oh. But they got this stupid size booklet. Oh. 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 Absolutely love the album artwork. Um, love everything about this record. Love the simple, um, the simple credits there. Love the simple lyrics. Uh, Can't Keep is a great album opener. Save You. Uh, one of my favorite Pearl Jam songs ever. I'm gonna save you. Not gonna lose you. I'm feeling cocky and strong. Can't let you go. Too important to me. Too important to us. We'd be lost without you. Baby, let yourself fall. I'm right below you now. I, I love just the explicit lyrics of that one. Just a lot of fun. I uh, feel like Eddie Vedder was not bored or complacent, but I feel like he was just making some bold statements here. Love Boat Captain, that's the one. If, you, if you're not going to go listen to Versus or, or uh, their debut album, listen to Love Boat Captain. It's one of my favorite songs ever of all time. Is this just another day, this God-forgotten place? First comes love and then comes pain. Let the games begin. Questions rise and answers fall. Insurmountable. 
Love boat captain, take the reins and steer us clear towards the clear here. It's already begun. It's already sung, but it can't be said enough. All you need is love. Is this just another phase? Earthquakes making waves, trying to shake the cancer off. Stupid human beings. Us, stupid. Pearl Jam are famous for not even knowing their own lyrics. Uh, Vitology made me mad, where like I was like, what in the world is he saying? I went to the lyric booklet, and there's just a bunch of question marks. Bah! Any better? Bah! Hold me and make it the truth. That's when, that when all is lost, there will be you. Because to the universe, I don't mean a thing. And there's just one thing that I still believe, and it's love. It's an art to live with pain. Mix the light into gray. Lost nine friends will never know two years ago today. They're talking about a real life event where uh, some fans were killed at a Pearl Jam concert. If our lives became too long, would it add to our regret? This is some of the deepest lyrical content ever. And you can actually understand it. And the young, they can lose hope because they can't see beyond today. The wisdom that the old can't give away. Constant recoil. Sometimes life don't leave you alone. Uh, man, that's just a beautiful, beautiful love song uh, dedicated to the people that lost their lives during that. Crop Duster is an interesting rocker. Ghost is another great one. I Am Mine, fantastic single um, with lyrics. The Selfish, they're all standing in line, faithing and hoping to buy themselves time. Me, I figure as each breath goes by, I only own my mind. The north is to south, what the clock is to time. There's east and there's west, and there's everywhere life. I know I was born, and I know I will die. The in-between is mine. The feelings, it, get, it gets left behind. All the innocence lost in one time. Significant behind the eyes. There's no need to hide. We're safe tonight. It feels like Pearl Jam have figured things out on this record. They figured out why life is sad, why life is happy, and they're just, they're, they're documenting the real world of 2002. Um, Thumbing My Way is great. Um, it's just, it's basically an Eddie Vedder uh, solo track. There's him with thousands of dollars worth of guitars. I have not been home since you left long ago. Thumbing My Way Back to Heaven. It's a really beautiful acoustic track. Check it out. Check it out. It's very different. You guys can tell I am pumped up about 2002's Riot Act. It's just the best freaking Pearl Jam record ever. Uh, I'm pumped about this album. Oh, wow. Uh, where were we? Where were we? So, yeah, you got this really cool, really cool booklet. Oh, it just smells so good. Just smells so freaking good. Uh, yeah, came in there. Um, you are. Oh yeah, uh, there's a uh, there's some other members wanting want wanted to get right uh, with a little uh, joint there uh, burning on that. Green disease. Another band member in this weird wacky book. Help help. You get a lot of those uh, those double word uh, song titles uh, from Pearl Jam. There is the always genius uh, Eddie Vedder. And then you get, uh, oh, he is, of course, right beside uh, Bush Leaguer, which uh, got some negative reactions from some uh, Bush supporters. But um, I love the song. Absolutely love the song. Uh, how does he do it? How do they do it? Uncanny and immutable. Some of the some of the greatest, most creative lyrics uh, from Pearl Jam here. This is such a happening tailpipe of a party. Like sugar, the guests are so refined. Looks like melting M&Ms. A confidence man, but why so beleaguered? He's not a leader, he's a Texas leaguer. Swinging for the fence, got lucky with the strike. Dealing for fear make the job simple born on third 
thinks he got a triple. Blackout weaves its way through the city. Blackout weaves its way through the city. I remember when you sang. Okay. A think tank of aloof multiplication, a nicotine wish, and a Columbus decanter. Retrenchment and hoggishness, the aristocrat choir sings. What's the ruckus? The haves have not a clue. The immenseness of suffering, the odd negotiation, a rarity, with onion skin plausibility of life, and a keyboard reaffirmation. Have you guys ever had a keyboard reaffirmation? Have you ever had a chihuahua that lives on top of your couch? Hey, buddy. Say hey to everybody. I remember when you sang that song about today. Now it's tomorrow and everything has changed. Those words still ring true today. Um, I was just listening to um, some System of a Down uh, steal this album earlier this morning. And wow, uh, Mr. Jack uh, definitely is a timely song, but that's somewhere else. Uh, Half Bull, you got another cool band picture here. Oh man, this oh this so smells so, so, so sweet. Um, you got uh, additional musicians. You got Boom Jasper, Adam Casper. Uh, that's kind of weird that their names rhyme. Uh, Brennan O'Brien mixed, of course. Um, you got some uh, other crew members. The album concept, which uh, you see right here, was by Al No Street. The cover photos were by Jeff Ament from Pearl Jam. Uh, you had a typist. So if any lyrics were wrong, or, well, I would blame Eddie Vedder. If any of the lyrics were wrong, the typist probably had no idea what he was saying. Uh, although that's not really an issue here as it was on Vitology. Oh my gosh, I've never, I don't remember this. We dedicate this record to John Entwistle from The Who, D.D. Ramon from The Ramones, and Ray Brown, who I am sorry to admit as your music historian. I don't know who Ray Brown is. We're going to find out because I got the internet right here, buddy. Ray Brown, what happened to you? Who are you? He's a musician. He died the year this album came out. He's a jazz double bassist. So, you got, uh, oh, it's all bass, bass players. Uh, John Entwistle from The Who, who I'm just really, really listening to a lot right now. Uh, D.D. Ramon. The Ramones are one of the best bands out there. And Ray Brown. Um, he worked with Oscar Peterson and Ella Fitzgerald. So, this album is dedicated to bass players that have passed on. Um, I think they all, I think they may have all passed around that same time. Love the packaging of this one. I feel like they, they got it right with this one where Vitology was just kind of a mess. Um, absolutely love this album art. It speaks to me like a heavenly voice from the demons. This has been Ranking the Studio Albums. Uh, I'm doing a whole bunch of these. So if you guys want to just like deep dive into rock, pop, country, rap, and more, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I've got, I've got at least a hundred of these. Um, probably going to end up being about maybe 300, 400 of these. I don't know. So, you know, please subscribe. I'm the smallest little YouTuber there is. Um, I'm doing this for the love of music. So just uh, like and subscribe, people. Like and subscribe. Woo! Oh, where, oh, where can my baby be? The Lord took her away from me. It's gone to heaven, so I got to be good. Bonus round time. I'm still here. Got the Pearl Jam Greatest Hits. I just saw it as I was singing. Uh, I was about to start fading out. This came out in, I guess, 2004, somewhere in there. And it's a pretty good Greatest Hits. Uh, if you guys have been watching for a while, I do like, I do prefer 
greatest hits that um, go in chronological order. Um, this one is set up a bit differently. Everybody tries to do a gimmick with their greatest hits. Uh, this has two discs, which is nice uh, because Pearl Jam have a lot, had a lot of hits in 2004. And uh, so they needed at least two discs. Um, they'd probably need three discs at this point, right, in 2020. Um, but they did like the faster songs on one disc and the slower songs on the other. Uh, it's titled after their song Rear View. Pretty great package here. Um, I haven't... Oh yeah, it smells good. Pearl Jam's got the best smelling records of any band, really. Not sure why that is. CD smells pretty standard. Uh, it's got some some of the, the additional tracks on here are great. Um, Man of the Hour is probably one of the main reasons I bought this. Absolutely love Man of the Hour. Oh man. From the, their first album cover. This is a bonus round, guys. Greatest hits of Pearl Jam. They need, to, they need to make another one. And it needs to be like chronological songs that were hits. This is not a this is not a great booklet. It's not bad. It could be worse. It couldn't have not had a booklet. It's just a bunch of black and white photos of the band. He looked like he was shirtless, but he wasn't. Um, so you got... Um, Yeah, this is just pretty, pretty great. Pretty great. Um, if you're a Pearl Jam collector, I, I would say get it. Um, kind of reminds me, I haven't seen too many uh, digipacks like this with the fold out. Um, I've got a few. I've got a few. Lincoln Park had some like this. Uh, not a fan of how they got the song titles on here. You can't tell what's what. But. Yeah, it smells great. So yeah, I own that one, I own that one, and I own this one. I have owned all the other Pearl Jam, the older Pearl Jam records at one time or another. Um, I got rid of them just because they were not, they were not up to the standards of my collection back here. Only the best music can be on my shelf. So these three definitely deserve it. Oh, where, oh, where can my chihuahua be? He's on the couch behind me. He's gone to the couch, so i got to be quiet. Or he's going to howl when I hit these notes. Oh, Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam, oh. Oh, yeah, Pearl Jam. I, Eddie Vedder can do some higher notes like that, right? I mean, I know he's got one of the deeper voices in rock. You guys know of any uh, like really high-pitched Pearl Jam songs? That would be interesting. Oh, where? Please like and subscribe. Oh, where, oh, where can my baby be? Ray Brown is dead and so is Ella Fitzgerald. Probably, I don't know. Ella Fitzgerald, I don't know. She could be. Let's take a look. Uh, yep, yep, long time ago. Oh, where, oh, where can Ella Fitzgerald be? My chihuahua is laughing at me. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Thank you. Chris Norwood signing out. Buddy Homer Norwood signing out. Camera zooming in. Camera. Zooming out.